This is Andy Proff, Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and I'm joined by Richard Schaefer here out, out here in Las Vegas. Richard, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. It's good to hear. Now, obviously, we've got the big fight on Saturday night, the rematch between Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz. What should we expect on Saturday? Well, we sort of like know what we what we will get uh, because the first time around uh, we saw a fight of the year. We saw the 2018 fight of the year. Uh, Wilder versus Ortiz won. We saw a fight uh, which saw back-to-back -back action. We saw uh, Deontay Wilder in trouble, like we've never seen him in trouble before. Uh, we've seen obviously Ortiz in trouble and we saw a spectacular ending. So I think we're going to see the same here. Uh, these two styles are made for each other. Styles make fights as we know in boxing. These two styles are made for each other. They're two guys who love to engage, who like to come forward, and they're two guys which have that one thing, which is very important for a heavyweight, for any boxer, the knockout punch. They have knockout power, and so we are going to see another spectacular night here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. Very fitting place, by the way. Most of the, many of the big heavyweight showdowns involving legends like uh, Evander Holyfield, uh, 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 Lennox Lewis, uh, Mike Tyson uh, were, were staged right here at the MGM Grand. So a very fitting place uh, for this fight to be hosted here at the legendary MGM Grand. Do you expect the fight to have many sim similarities or differences from the last fight? Well, I think uh, we know it's going to be, I, I think we're going to see a knockout again. It's going to, I don't think it's going to go to the decision. Uh, I can't tell you who is going to win uh, by knockout. Uh, I can give you reasons why Wilder is going to win because that's what he does. He knocks out people, 41 wins, uh, 40 of them by knockout. That's what Deontay Wilder does. That's why he's the king of the heavyweight division, biggest puncher in the sport, biggest knockout ratio. Uh, so we definitely, uh, we know that about him. But then you look at Ortiz. Ortiz is the only guy who really had Wilder in trouble. So we know he's a big puncher. We know, we've seen him yesterday at the press conference, and you look at these pictures uh, here in the, in the media room, the uh, Luis Ortiz we see on those posters is not the Luis Ortiz who we see today. This is a different guy. This is a guy who is not only mentally ready, but he is physically ready like he has never been before. He knows that this is high noon for him. He's approaching 40 years. Uh, he lived a clean life, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke and so on. So the age is really not that much of a factor, but he knows that the clock is ticking, that that might be his last chance at the world title. And he knows as well, mentally, he knows as well that he has the power and the skills to hurt Deontay Wilder. So that makes Ortiz a very, very, as they say, a life dog. And uh, those people who have uh, in the sports book and so on, they have Ortiz as a six to one underdog. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be surprised. And I'm going on the record right here if Ortiz would win this fight. At the press conference yesterday, Luis Ortiz and his team said that he's lost around 20 pounds in the build-up to this fight. He also touched on that in the last fight, he felt like he gassed out when Deontay was able to stop him. Do you feel that he will, we will see the benefits of the 20 pounds that he's lost, or do you think it might hinder him in the rematch? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, he comes from that Cuban boxing school, so he definitely has his skills as well. Very skillful fighter, big puncher, and he knew what the weakness was. He realized that, he, he, he admitted it, that he gassed out, he got tired, and he knew what to do to avoid that, that he needed to get physically in a better shape. And that's what he did. So we know he knew the one problem he had in the first fight, casting out, that he needed to address that, and he addressed it, and he is ready. He still has the skills, he still has the power, but now he's gonna have the gas in the tank too. So that makes him such a dangerous opponent. And you really have to give it to Deontay Wilder. I mean, everybody knows there's a potential showdown against Tyson Fury looming out there. This is playing with fire. This might potentially cost Wilder, not millions, but tens of millions. So you've got to hand it to Deontay Wilder. You've got to hand it to him that this guy got balls.
What do you think it is that Deontay has decided to face Lewis now, knowing he has such a big fight with Tyson Fury around the corner, provided he was successful, obviously, on Saturday? Well, I mean, it shows you, it tells you everything you need to know. If you don't know Deontay Wilder, you know now, uh, because uh, it takes a special fighter to challenge himself and to take risks like that. And the fact that he's doing that is exactly what makes Deontay Wilder the king of the hill, the king of the heavyweight division, and the superstar he is. And then on this undercard, we see Leo Santa Cruz attempt to become a four-weight world champion against Miguel Flores. What are your thoughts on that fight and Leo's career? Well, uh, I was fortunate to sign uh, Leo Santa Cruz very early on in his career, promoted most of his fights. He's a hell of a fighter. Uh, he's a volume puncher. He's another exciting fighter. He's like a dynamo. He just keeps going, keeps going. Uh, I think he owns the record of most punches landed in a fight by CompuBox. So uh, an exciting guy, an exciting guy to see. Uh, so we, we just... Um, you know, we'll have, we'll, we'll have to see if he's going to be successful. I would never bet against Leo Santa Cruz. Uh, he's going to be in a tough fight. And frankly, it, it tells you about the strength of this card to have that kind of fight, heavyweight title fight on that card. In any other network, in any other promotion, that would be a main event. That wouldn't be on an undercard. And it shows you how committed Premier Boxing Champions PPC is to put really the best cards together. And then you have another fight, which I have to tell you, uh, is I'm, as ex I'm very excited about Wilder Ortiz, but I'm equally excited about um, Luis Neri and, uh, and, and Rodriguez. Rodriguez, former world champion, great fighter. Uh, great fighter. And with Luis Neri, uh, the 118 pound weight class, we might have the best fighter in the 118 pound weight class. Uh, uh, they say uh, uh, they say Inui is the monster, but uh, I think the real monster in the division is uh, is Neri, uh, Luis Neri, a hell of a fighter, and uh, we'll see what uh, he's gonna what he's gonna do. If he's successful, he has already been named as the mandatory challenger to the WBC champion Ubali, Nordin Ubali, uh, and so we'll see. And uh, of course, uh, with Nonito Donair. Uh, he would love to fight the winner of such a fight. So there's a lot of action in the 118-pound weight class, and that's an other excellent fight. So really, top to bottom, a loaded card. Away from this card, I just want to ask you about a few of the fights and fighters. Starting off with two and a half weeks' time, we talk about heavyweights now. Out in Saudi Arabia, Ruiz, Joshua too. What are your thoughts on that fight, Richard? How do you see it going? Well, I sort of like go back and forth, you know. I uh, don't really know. Uh, who is going to win? I mean, if Ruiz is going to be, uh, if Ruiz is going to be, uh, you know, as focused as he was the first time, he might give uh, Joshua a tough, difficult time again. But you know, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's like it's a good fight. And then obviously, away from that, we see. Well, I was going to ask you about Nonito Donier. Yeah, sorry, have you spoken to him since his defeat to Noi Nua? He's actually arriving tonight, Thursday, from the Philippines. He took some time off with his family, a little vacation, and I'm going to be meeting up with him tomorrow or Saturday uh, here at the MGM. I know he's going to be coming to the fight, and I'm going to talk to him to see what's next. Uh, uh, if it's, uh, you know, he did tell me that he would love to have a rematch with Inui, but that he is willing to fight at 118, 122, 126, any of those weight classes. And obviously he wants to fight for a world title again. Does he not have any, has he had any doubts about maintaining his career or has he just thought he's still got more? You know, when you turn on this kind of performance against the guy who some boxing writer had as pound for pound, the best fighter in the world with Inui, and most boxing writers had him among the top five pound for pound best fighters in the world, Inui, and you see Donaire putting in a performance like that, where uh, on one of the judges' cards, it was only the knockdown which made the difference of winning and losing. So it's sort of like difficult to have a conversation with a fighter about his retirement when you turn that in that kind of performance. He clearly belongs, he clearly can still perform, and he's another one of those fighters. Uh, we've seen that with. Um, with Bernard Hopkins, for example, who fought into his late 40s, early 50s. Uh, if you live a clean life, you take care of your body, you take care of what you eat, you take care of what you drink, and you don't smoke, you know, you live a healthy lifestyle, uh, then the, the, the age becomes less, less of a factor. Now, I realize that on the lower weight classes, there's much more action and, you know, there's, you get hit more and so on. So that probably the retirement age for a fighter in the lower weight class is a bit lower than one in the heavier weight classes where there's generally less action. 
But uh, Nonito, after this performance, I think you can put him in with any fighter at 118, 122, and 126. And he not only will fight well, but he will probably beat most of those guys. I would say to the tune of probably 90, 95% of the guys in any of those weight classes, Nonito Donaire would beat. And finally, Richard, before I let you go, Joe Joyce, according to the EBU website, has been had, a, had his fight with Marco Hook confirmed. It's going to take place in Germany, according to the website. Anything you can fill us in on? Well, they're waiting on the date uh, from the uh, from the Germans, which won the the purse bid, and you know the European uh, 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 for the European title have different rules there. Uh, if the Germans don't come through, then it will go to purse bid again. So it's like a lengthy procedure and it's sort of like sidelines of fighter and uh, I think uh, if I would be the European Boxing Commission I would definitely look at if, if promoters uh, put in bids which they can't deliver on then that they're going to get uh, eliminated from future participation on purse bids because it's not fair to the fighters. It's basically like jerking around the boxers you know and that's not right and the European the European uh, uh, boxing authorities are going to have to look into that and going to have to do something about it because you can't let that go unpunished. Just to go and do another purse bid and then somebody comes and bids some crazy numbers and they can't deliver, they like, you know, they're playing with the fighter's career and that's wrong. Uh, I think uh, if this guy, uh, if this guy, Huck, is not, if they're not coming through, Joe Choi should be allowed to fight anybody he wants for the European world title and then uh, for the European title and then um, after that maybe make a mandatory defense against somebody as determined by the European Boxing Commission. But to hold up Joe Choice the way this has played out is simply wrong. Well, Richard Schaefer, I've kept you for long enough. I know you're going to be a busy man. You've got other things to do. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for speaking to myself and Boxing Social. Anytime. Thank you very much. 